Hello everyone. This video will go through the story of Detroit become human. Connor, an RK-800 android, goes to a penthouse to negotiate with another one that has become deviant. Upon arrival, Connor is informed by Captain Allen that Deviant murdered the owner of the house and is holding his daughter hostage. Through his advanced sense and analysis system, Connor quickly learns from evidence that the murder was motivated by the fact that the house owner was planning to replace the Deviant android with a new model. Going outside, Connor sees the android standing on the edge of the balcony, holding a girl in his arm, but Connor eases his nerve and convinces him to let go of the hostage. Then the android is shot and destroyed by the ambush and sniper. Kara, an AX400 android of house care, is picked up by Todd Williams after she has been repaired in a store. After they return home, Kara immediately begins to do chores around the house. She also meets Todd's daughter, Alice, whom she takes care of. From Alice's drawing, Kara learns that she was broken by Todd the first time. It proves that Todd is a bad-tempered guy, indulging himself with alcohol and drugs. He blames his hurt of his wife having left him to his daughter Alice. One night, his anger is triggered again by Alice looking at him. He orders Kara to stay in the dining room while he goes upstairs to beat Alice. Unable to leave Alice alone, Kara defies the order and protects Alice from Todd. They eventually run out of the house. With no money at hand, they steal some cash from a grocery and spend a night at a motel. Marcus, an RK-200 android, is running an errand to pick up some paint, but encounters hatred towards androids on his way. Back at home, he awakens and cares for Carl Manfred, an artist who is stricken with several ailments due to age. After serving him breakfast, Marcus and Carl go to the studio while Carl teaches Marcus how to create art and is impressed by Marcus' creativity. Carl's son, Leo, then intrudes to request money to feed his drug habit, but angry leaves when he is refused by Carl, claiming that his father never loved him and instead only loves himself and his android. One night, Leo again asks his father for money. Being refused again, he throws his anger at Marcus. Marcus is ordered by Carl not to move. He obeys. But Carl dies of heart attack, and they fail to save him. After the police arrive, Leo accuses Marcus for Carl's death. The police disassemble Marcus and dump his remains in a junkyard. However, Marcus managed to reboot and repair himself with some components from some other android's remains. While stumbling outside the junkyard, a dying android pleads him to find Jericho, a place where androids can be free and gives him the needed key for the entrance. Connor was sent by the android company Cyberlife to find Lieutenant Hank Anderson and accompany him in the investigation of the murder of Carlos Ortiz, committed again by a deviant android. At the crime scene, Connor and Hank catch the deviant on the spot. The police try to interrogate the deviant after taking him back, but he refuses to cooperate. When Connor intervenes and fails to lower the demon's stress order, he commits self-destruction and smashes his head. After this case, Connor meets his handler, Amanda from Cyberlife, who tasks him with further investigation into the cases, The more and more androids become deviants. Connor and Hank go to the motel where Carl and Alice live for the night. They try to get information from the receptionist on the deviant Carl. The receptionist recognizes Carl but she and Alice safely escape. After finding the hidden leads in the gravity, Marker successfully reached Jericho in an abandoned cargo ship. There, he is welcomed by several other androids who runs off human control. Quite a few androids are severely damaged and are about to shut down, but they lack necessary components to repair themselves. Marker sees a cyberlife crate in Jericho debris through which he calculates the original location of Cyberlife supply. He proposes to Simon to steal some components to maintain their long-term functioning, which is supported by the rest of the androids. They sneak into the docks and grab some components in the crates of Cyberlife. Though they are spotted by an android guard, the guard is willing to go with them. Marcus also frees some newly assembled androids to join their team. 
by stealing a key in the control room alone, Marcus drops back a truck of supplies, gaining respect from all the Android residents in Jericho. An Android trash collector directs Kara and Alice to Slatko's house, where they may ask for help. After learning about Kara's Android origin, Slatko invites them into his house and offers help with their escape by first removing a tracker inside Kara. However, when Kara steps into the machine in the basement, Slatko reveals his real goal, namely catching deviants and using them for his experiments. Alice tries to save Kara by risking her own life, but she is taken away by Slatko's servant android, Luther. Having been reset on a machine and lost all her memory, Kara steps outside the basement. He finds some broken androids used by Slatko for experiments, who reminds Kara to save a little girl. She recollects her memory and finds Alice in the bathroom. They hide away from Slatko and Luther, finally sneak out of the house, but are busted by Slatko with a gun in his hand. At the very dangerous moment, Luther disobeys Slatko and protects Kara and Alice from being hurt. After Slatko is killed by his experimental androids, Luther offers to help Kara flee to the country boat. Connor tracks some more suspect deviants, and he consistently sees a symbol appearing around these deviants, RA9. He and Lieutenant Anderson go to Eden Club to investigate a client being murdered by a sexy android. There's an android remnant beside the victim's body. By reactivating the dead android, Connor learns that the client is killed by another female android who has escaped. Connor and Hank track the murder's trail to a staff house, where they are confronted by two androids, one of which is the murderer. Trying to subdue the criminal, Connor accidentally shoots and kills one of the androids. The other one commits suicide afterwards, as she and her companion are lovers. Hank quarrels with Connor over this incident, as he regards Connor as Ruth's machine. Though Connor tries to defend himself, he is shot in the head in the end. Seeing more androids being treated like slavers to human, Marcus thinks that it's time to deliver their message to human, and his idea gets full support from Jericho. He infiltrates the Stratford Tower, where Channel 16 is located. North backs him inside the building, and by dressing themselves as janitor, they deceive the guards and get into the server room. Through there, Marcus and the North climb outside the wall until they reach the top floor where they are joined by Josh and Simon. They together are sold into the broadcast room, which inevitably causes some human's life. Then Marker stands in front of the camera, peacefully delivering his message, demanding end of slavery and civil rights for androids. When a SWAT team breaks in, the androids escape, but Simon is heavily wounded. They leave Simon behind and jump out of the building. The public are shocked by the android messaging, and hostility arises around human due to the casualty caused by this incident. Hank is sent to the Stratford Tower along with Connor, and repair the new model. They investigate the crime scene inside the broadcast room. Connor notices that all the activities outside the room was recorded by the surveillance camera, but the persons inside were not warned in advance, which means there is a deviant android among the guards. By interrogating them, Connor spots a deviant, but he attacks and runs away. Connor pursues him to the corridor, where the deviant grabs a gun from one of the police. He tries to make self-defense before Connor shoots and kills him. Meanwhile, Simon remains hidden somewhere in the building. The next step of Marker's plan is to break into the Cyberlife stores to free more androids. He and North sneak into the city center, evade the patrolling police, and ram into the store with a truck. There, they free hundreds of androids, and giving them a speech to inspire them to seek their own freedom. Marcus gets all the androids to join Jericho. Afterwards, Marcus wants to leave a message for their cause. Encouraged by North, Marcus and his following androids vandalize the Cyberlife store and the Capitol Park nearby. Just as they are about to retreat, Two policemen bust them and kill some of the freed androids. The two men are subdued by the overwhelmed mass and await Marker's trial. For retaliation, Marker's killed them both. Despite the blizzard outside the way, Kara and Luther find a woman named Rose, 
who consistently helps Deviant androids cross the border. Rose agrees to help Kara and goes out for checking the border. Right at that time, a policeman arrives to search for Deviants. Though Kara tries to eliminate his suspicion, the policeman finds Luther hiding in the kitchen. He shoots Luther, and Luther also kills him. Then Luther tells Kara to continue her journey with Alice without him. Connor and Hank pay a visit to Ali J. Kamsky, the founder of Cyberlife and inventor of androids in the hope of finding some clues about how an android could become a deviant. Kamsky gives no answer, but instead makes a test on empathy with Connor. He asks Connor to shoot a lovely female android in front of him and promises him that by doing so, he will be told everything he wants to know about deviants. However, Connor can't do that and leaves with Hank. In Jericho, North tells Marcus that she was originally a sex android in Eden Club before she couldn't take any more from the human who treated her like a pleasure doll. She strangled one of the clients and ran away. She encourages Marcus to be more determined with their cause. Afterwards, Marcus reunites with Simon. Later someday, Marcus, North, Simon, and Josh organize a demonstration rally on the street. By liberating more androids along their march, their team become larger, the police force feels threatened and demands them to disperse, otherwise they will fire weapons. George suggests non-violence, and the North insists on fighting to the end. Eventually, Marcus leads his android attack police, a bloodshed confrontation happens, and Marcus gets himself wounded when attempting to save North. Though losing quite a few androids' lives, they win the battle ultimately, forcing the police to retreat. As the angel's threat has risen to a civil war, Hank is ordered by his superior to stop his investigation into the deviants and hand it over to FBI. Trying to continue his mission, Connor sneaks into the archive room where the remnants of the deviant angels are kept. After repairing and reactivating the guards from Stratford Tower, Connor successfully obtains the location of Jericho by tricking him with Marker's voice. Then he heads there. Rose takes Kara and Alice to the shipyard where Jericho is located and tells them that from there they can cross the border to Canada along with other androids. Kara takes Alice in and meets Marker's, who promises to help them with the passport and crossing border. By chance, Kara sees a little girl android in Jericho who looks identical to Alice. Then Kara recollects her memory that she has seen before a similar model of YK-500 in Todd's home, which means that Alice may be in fact an android, but she and Alice have already grown family emotion to each other. As humans are capturing androids nationwide, Marcus decides to launch final confrontation towards human. North tells Marcus that no matter what happens, she will not regret. After she leaves, Connor breaks in, holding Marcus at gunpoint and demanding him to go. Marcus reasons with Connor and questions his own value, which eventually shakes Connor's belief and makes him give up the mission. At the same time, US military force begins an assault on Jericho, which causes all the angels to flee to avoid being captured or slaughtered. Connor and Alice are left behind and almost get caught, but they deceive the human soldiers by playing dead on the ground. After having rescued as many angels as he can, Marcus returns to the control room and activates the explosive on a the ship. Then he flees with companions. Though North is shot in the process, she is saved by Marcus while Connor is covering them. They successfully escape by jumping into the water, while Jericho blows up in a blast of fire. U.S. President soon declares nationwide curfew and orders all angels be captured and sent to camp for destruction. Marcus orders his remaining deviant to attack the camp and free the captured angels there. Feeling sorry for letting human launch assault on Jericho, Connor proposes to Marcus that he infiltrate the Cyberlife company where he can liberate thousands of angels in the assembly plant, which may shift the balance of power. He enters Cyberlife with no difficulty and by killing the escorting human guards, he reached the assembly plant. Eliminating the human guards there, Connor is only one step far from his goal. However, 
He is shot from behind and mortally wounded by another carnal model. He kills this carnal model with his last breath, but dies soon afterward. Kara and Alice reach the bus terminal where they can take the bus to Canada, but they are accidentally spotted by Todd, who is about to turn them in. At the very dangerous moment, Kara reveals the truth that Alice is just an android he bought as a substitute to his real daughter, who had been taken away by his ex-wife. This touches Todd's heart, and he admits that his purpose is to prove himself a good father, and then he lets them go. With no tickets at hand, Kara is worrying about how to get on bus. Fortunately, he finds Rose, who is also fleeing to Canada for her crime of having helped the deviants. She drives Kara and Alice to the river bank, where Kara and Alice get a boat from a smuggler. Once reach the other side, they will be free. Meanwhile, Marcus leads his men to attack the Hard Plaza camp. Facing a heavy defense force there, Androids pays a great loss, including both Jack and Simon died in the battle. Marcus continues his bravery, leading his people forward, but is eventually shot and falls on the battlefield. North volunteers to save him by spare his own component, but is rejected by Marcus. Finally, Marcus dies with North by his side. The patrolling force spot Kara and Alice on the river, and they fire his weapon towards anyone who attempts to cross. After they leave, Alice is unhurt, but Kara is shot and mortally wounded. Having only a few minutes left before death, she tries all she can to get Broken Bow to the other side, and carries Alice onto the riverbank before telling Alice that she loves her more than anything.